If you're trying to code a good player controller, sprinting, slope movement and crouching should not be missing. So in this video, I'll show you step by step how to implement these things. As a base, I'm going to use the player movement code I showed you last time, so if you want it the easy way, make sure to follow along with this tutorial first. But of course, you can also use your own movement code if you want to, you just need to change a few lines. Now let's just get started with the first thing on the list, which is sprinting. For this, you want to make your move speed variable private and instead add two public floats for your walk speed and sprint speed. From now on, you're only going to change these two in Unity and the move speed variable will be changed inside of the script. And you're also going to need a key code for your sprint key. Now to code the sprinting ability, we're going to create movement states for our player and depending on which keys you're pressing, the player will enter a different state. So to create these states, we're just going to use an enum called movement state and in there we're going to define the states walking, sprinting and air. Also, we'll create a separate movement state variable called state. This variable will always store the current state the player is in. Now all that's left to do is to create a new function called state handler and in there add a few basic if statements. So if you're grounded and pressing the sprint key, you want to set your movement state to sprinting and your move speed to sprint speed. If you're only grounded but not pressing the sprint key, set your state to walking and your move speed to walk speed. And if both of these statements don't get executed, that means you're not grounded, you want to set your movement state to air. Don't forget to call the state handler in void update and now go back to Unity. Here you just need to assign some values to your walk and sprint speed and hit play. If you now press shift, you're able to sprint. Next, we're going to tackle crouching. So create new floats for your crouch speed, crouch y scale and start y scale as well as a key code for your crouch key. And in void start, just quickly save what the normal Y scale of your player is. Then you can go into the my input function and just check if you press down the crouch key. If you did, you want to shrink your player down by setting your local scale to a new vector free, keep the X and Z scale the same, but change the Y scale to your crouch Y scale. Now if you do this, there will be a little problem, because if this is your player and you shrink him down, you're now floating in the air a bit. So we need to add a bit of download force to quickly push the player on the ground again. You can do this by using rigidbody.addForce, vector3.down and using forcemode.impulse. Now to stop crouching, you can just check if the crouch key was released and then set your player scale back to normal again. And now you probably want your player to be slowed down while crouching. And since we already implemented the state handler, this is super easy. Just add a new state called crouching and then inside of your state handler, you can check if you're pressing the crouch key and if so, you want to change your state to crouching and your move speed to crouch speed. Now again, in Unity, just add the values and this is it. You're now able to crouch. With that done, let's move on to the last thing on the list, which is slope movement. Now, you might have already noticed that even with the basic movement script, you can move up slopes. Kind of. You're just really slow upwards and downwards you bounce like a ball, which is not that optimal, to say the least. This happens because currently you're adding force directly into the slope. So the first step to get better slope movement is to apply force relative to the angle of the slope. But for this we first need to check if the player is even standing on the slope. So create a new float for your max slope angle and a raycast hit variable called slope hit. Now, like we did with the ground check in the last video, we're going to shoot a raycast downwards and the length will be a half of our player's height plus a bit more. So in your script, create a new bool called onSlope and perform this raycast. Also, this bit stores the information of the object we hit in the slope hit variable. 
Now with vector3.angle we can calculate how steep the slope we're standing on is and then we want the bool to return true if the angle is smaller than our max slope angle and not zero. Also if the raycast doesn't hit anything the bool should return false. And now we can finally find the correct direction relative to our slope. For this just create a new vector3 and use the project on plane function passing in your move direction and the slope hit dot normal. Like this we projected our normal move direction onto the slope which is exactly what we want. Now we can just go back to our move player function and if the player is on a slope we want to add force in the slope move direction we just calculated. If you now set the max slope angle to something like 40 and hit play, you can see that the slope movement feels a lot better, but it's still not perfect. For example, if you stand still, you'll slowly slide down the slope because of gravity. The easiest way to fix this is to just turn off the rigid body's gravity while we're standing on a slope. Even though this might seem weird, it's actually no problem. Because as soon as the player exits the slope, the gravity gets turned on again. So in game, you won't even notice when it's turned off at times. Great, you're no longer sliding down slopes. But now that we turned off the gravity, when we move upwards, we make this weird bumping movement. But there's an easy fix for this. Basically, if the player is moving upwards, which means his y velocity is greater than zero, we want to add a bit of downward force to keep the player constantly on the slope. So that's fixed, but now you might notice that on the slope you're actually moving too fast. And this is because of the way our speed control function works. It limits the player's x and z movement to our move speed. So on the ground you can move a maximum of 7 tiles per second horizontally. And on the slope it's the same, but you're now traveling a further distance in the same time. So open the speed control function and if we're standing on a slope we can use this code to limit the player's velocity to our move speed, no matter in which direction the player is going. Now we're almost done, there's just one tiny problem left. We can't jump anymore. This is because on a slope we're now also limiting the jump velocity. But this is easy to fix, just add an exiting slope bool and if you're jumping set it to true and if you reset your jump set it to false again. And then only apply the limitation and slope movement if you're not trying to exit the slope. Now I know slope movement is not the easiest thing to code, but congrats, you did it. As always, if you have trouble setting anything up, you can download the entire project file for free on my Discord server. And now thank you so much for watching. If the tutorial has helped you in any way, make sure to like the video in return and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you next time and best of luck with your coding project.